cell needs to be able to harvest energy from glucose to get the usable energy, ATP. Whether oxygen is present or not, cells can always do glycolysis, which occurs in the fluid cytosol of the cell. No oxygen is needed for this. During glycolysis, the 6-carbon glucose molecule is broken in half and rearranged to make two pyruvic acid molecules. The process requires two ATP to get started, but ultimately it produces four ATP from ADP and phosphate, and it produces two NADH from NAD+. So overall, glycolysis makes two pyruvic acids, two ATP, and two NADH. From here, there are two possible pathways that could be taken. Cellular respiration always starts the same way, with glycolysis. From there, the two pathways are determined by the presence of oxygen. If there is no oxygen available, anaerobic respiration will occur. But if oxygen is available, aerobic respiration will occur in the mitochondria. Let's look at anaerobic respiration first. The anaerobic pathway has another name, fermentation. Fermentation is an anaerobic process that converts sugars to acids or gases or alcohols. It includes the glycolysis step in it. Fermentation replenishes the supply of NAD plus so that glycolysis can continue, creating two ATP from each glucose molecule. There are two types of fermentation. There's alcoholic fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. In lactic acid fermentation, pyruvic acid is converted to a chemical called lactic acid. The process changes NADH back to NAD plus so that glycolysis can continue and produce the two net ATP. Fermentation itself doesn't create any ATP, it's just keeping the glycolysis running. Our muscles use lactic acid fermentation when there's not enough oxygen to do aerobic respiration. Your muscles will feel cramped and painful, but this pain will go away as soon as you get enough oxygen back to your muscles so that you can go back into aerobic respiration. Other organisms use a different pathway and create an alcohol and carbon dioxide instead of lactic acid from pyruvic acid. Again, they still make NAD plus for glycolysis to use, but the pathway is a little different. Yeast will undergo alcoholic fermentation, and we use it to our advantage when making bread or beer. The alcohol and bubbles in beer are made by the yeast through alcoholic fermentation. When bread dough is left to rise, the rising comes from the production of carbon dioxide bubbles in fermentation. The alcohol in the bread cooks off in the baking process. Now, anaerobic respiration is not actually very good at making ATP. It relies on just the two ATP that can be made from glycolysis. But if oxygen is present, aerobic respiration will occur. And it's an ATP-producing machine. Aerobic respiration takes place in the mitochondria of eukaryotic cells and in the cytosol of prokaryotic cells. After glycolysis occurs in the cytosol, and pyruvic acid is attached to coenzyme A, there are two major parts. The Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain, which is paired with chemiosmosis. This last step is where oxygen is used. During the Krebs cycle, two ATP and the gas carbon dioxide are produced. The carbon dioxide will eventually diffuse out of the cell. This is why we breathe out carbon dioxide. The electron transport chain and chemiosmosis take place in the folded inner membrane of the mitochondria called the cristae. In the end, aerobic respiration can make up to 38 total ATP, theoretically, but usually it's a bit less than that, more like 30 to 32 ATP. So the final reaction is glucose plus oxygen yields six CO2 and six water plus energy in the form of ATP. And lots of it. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.